Hey everybody, and welcome to Wedding Videography for Beginners. I am your host, Phil Beabout, and today I wanted to chat about live streaming a wedding through Zoom. Uh, we made a video on how to live stream through YouTube, and it was it's pretty popular. Like it's, it's doing really well, and I wanted to kind of do a video on how to live stream through Zoom because we have since migrated to it. So while we were using YouTube with OBS and some other stuff, we have since kind of moved over to Zoom. And I wanted to chat about that and then talk about how you actually do it through Zoom because it is a little easier. Um, you would think that it's a downgrade to go from YouTube to Zoom, but there are some pretty cool features inside of it that we really liked that we... Um, that we use a lot that kind of adds a lot of value to your customers. So uh, let, let's talk about some downsides to YouTube live streaming on YouTube, just in general. Uh, from what I know, you have to have at least a thousand followers for people to watch the live stream on their phone, which kind of stinks. Um, yeah, we don't, we, we have over 400. So, and that's just for wedding videography for beginners are, parent, you know, the parent company or wedding videography company, we, we only have like a hundred or so followers. So we don't, we're nowhere close to that, to that benchmark yet. Um, the thing that I really liked about zoom is flexibility after the ceremony. And what I mean by that is the ability to have the couple interact with the people on the other side. So with Zoom or with uh, YouTube, you have the chat feature and that kind of stuff. And when the ceremony is over and you you kind of stop, like that's it. Like the, the system, you know, it's done. There's nothing else really to do. With Zoom, however, you can keep the, um, like the meeting open, go to a private location, even if it's just a small room and just have the couple in there for three to five minutes, nothing too crazy. And they can say hello to their guests. They can interact with people. Like people can talk back with them. Like it's it's a two way. It's a little two way street with them. That adds that adds a significant amount of value uh, when you're talking to the couples about live streaming because there might be people from across the country that can't come in, and because they can't come in, like with YouTube, you just you they just watch the ceremony and then be done with it and be on their way. With Zoom, you can actually have people interact with a couple and that kind of stuff. And it doesn't have to be for you know 30 minutes. Just a few minutes adds a lot of value to both the people that are watching and then also the couple because they can interact with those family members. Um, we There's no need for anything additional like OBS. So with YouTube, you need to have OBS. You need to be, you know, you have to have it connected and that kind of stuff. And, you know, there's, there's some little twerks with OBS that we figured out throughout the years. And then, um, this was like workarounds to various different things. And it's, it just, that's one more step with YouTube with zoom. Once you're connected, meaning your camera is just simply connected to your computer, Zoom automatically recognizes it and you can just change that input value over to, uh, in our case, the cam link and you just select cam link and bada bing, you can see your image. Um, so that's, that's a big, it's faster to set up because of that. So we do pay for zoom. We pay for the professional, I think is what it's called. It's $149 a year. And that removes the 40 minute time limit with more than one guest, I'm pretty sure is how they have it. So if you have one guest, I think you can go above 40 minutes, but if you have more than one, then you got that 40 minute time restriction. Um, with that being said though, you know, we do use zoom for other things. We use zoom for our storytelling sessions. You know, when we're interacting with our clients, like we, whenever we're speaking to a client, uh, other than that, like discovery call, then we were using zoom because we, we like to talk face to face. It's just more personable. Um, but like that's, so have paying that one forty nine a year is kind of trivial. Like it's not, it's not this, uh, uh, you know, super expensive piece. Now there are a couple of ways to doing, um, the television just turned on over here. It's just me in the basement. I swear the TV just turned on and it's playing. Uh, it's playing a cartoon. Hold on a second. Let's, let's talk about a couple of options when it comes to just 
live streaming through Zoom in general. You always have the option of live streaming uh, with like your cell phone or your tablet. So you could, you know, toss your cell phone up on a tripod and just live stream, say from the center aisle and that kind of stuff, and then call it good. You could do that right through the app on your phone using the phone's microphone and the camera on the phone. And do the same exact thing with an iPad. Um, just put it up on a tripod, stream it, you know, uh, depending on what kind of iPad you have, if it has 3G or 4G, you could do it straight through it or you might need to tether it to something. Um, that's the cheapest option because most people have cell phones. Most people have tripods, especially if you're doing weddings. The, um, the middle option would be streaming through Zoom with a camera, wireless microphone, uh, and then connected through a hotspot. So that's, that's the middle option. And then obviously the high end you're using like an ATEM mini with the, uh, uh, like a Hollyland Mars transceiver with three to four cameras that you're just switching back and forth to with an extra person whose sole purpose in life at that point is just to monitor the live stream and then cut back and forth between cameras and that kind of stuff. All of those are perfectly viable options. A lot of people have been zooming weddings with cell phones. Like that's, there's an absolutely nothing wrong with that. We really want to focus on the middle option today because that's, that works best for us personally with our brand. And it's not as labor intensive as the high end option, which plenty of people do. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's just one of those things that we don't necessarily need to as a company, like all of our couples and clients and that kind of stuff have been really satisfied with just a single camera, you know, quality audio, and then getting a good, you know, quality stream coming from it. So that's, that's where we like to, where we like to sit. Um, we, so let, let's just talk about some things that you're going to need just in general for the middle option camera. Most of you probably have a camera. If you're watching this, uh, you're going to need a laptop or some way to feed the camera into Zoom. Uh, we just use our MacBook, which is sitting over here. Uh, you're going to need a way to connect the camera. So for us, we use the Cam Link. Uh, this is the Cam Link 4K. And we do not rely on hotspots or we do not tether through our phone. We don't use the venues, Wi-Fi. We don't do anything like that. We bring our own mobile hotspot. This is an Alcatel wireless hotspot through T-Mobile. This works really well. Uh, and then you're obviously going to need an HDMI cable. So the object of the HDMI cable is to connect the cam link from your camera to the laptop. I did see a question in the how to live stream a wedding through YouTube video where someone was asking if they have an HDMI port, can they just plug straight into it? And the way that I understand those ports is that those are HDMI out. So that's feeding the signal from your, or say your laptop to a projector like device. Uh, so I don't think that you can go in with those. That's why these things are here. Um, uh, but you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody leave me a comment. Let me know if I'm I'm dumb or not. But I didn't I didn't think that you could actually go in with that. With that being said, if you're shooting with something like we do, the Panasonic S5, uh, we actually use our Panasonic GH5S to do the live streaming only because it has a full size HDMI port and that's our safe camera. So we leave our GH5S in the back. We only use it for the ceremony and the toasts. The sole purpose in life is just the safe camera and then the couple's reaction camera. With that being said, if you're shooting on something like the Panasonic S5 that has a micro HDMI cable, we have a regular micro HDMI to HDMI because we use monitors and how we split that is one of these little things. This is just an HDMI, uh, it's a female HDMI to female HDMI connector. So you can connect the micro HDMI cable to an existing HDMI, or if you are using a monitor like the feel world that we are using up top right now, that monitor has a HDMI out. So you could plug directly into the monitor and then be fed right into zoom. And you're going to see that here in a moment because that's exactly how I'm going to connect for our little demonstration just to show how to do it and fire it up. I'm just going to go straight out of the HDMI out. Now, what I want to do 
is cut over to the computer screen, show you guys how to set up a meeting, and then how to connect your camera to Zoom. Before we do that real quick, if you are a wedding videographer and you're watching this, one thing I would highly encourage is that you connect your camera to your Zoom meetings, no matter what you're doing. Whether If you're interacting with a client or something like that, it's a good idea to be broadcasting the best quality video and the best quality audio that you can, not using the, the camera that's sitting on your iPad or the computer itself, just because you want to present a better picture. It's just one of those things like, hey, I'm a videographer. I can do this better than most people. That's just the kind of mentality that I have with it. So let's get over to the laptop. I'm going to show you guys how to create a meeting, and then we'll we'll go into how to connect it, and then I'll, I'll just show it. It'll probably look like Inception coming through both cameras and that kind of stuff. All right, so let's, let's cut over. I personally like using the app. I don't know why. It just seems easier. So here is... Here is my homepage for Zoom. So if I had a wedding that was coming up or if I had an, a, a thing that was coming up, it would be right here in my upcoming meetings. Um, but if I wanted to create a meeting, I just simply go Command D or can I think it's a Windows D on a com Windows computer. And then you can schedule a meeting. So let's just leave it as Philip B about Zoom meeting. We'll do it today. Uh, yeah, let's just say from 2.30 to 3, just to keep it simple. Uh, leave all this stuff the same. So generate automatically your passcode. I would recommend removing the waiting room because users have to be admitted when you do that. And if you're filming a ceremony and people are late and that kind of stuff, they're just going to sit inside of that green room waiting for you, uh, waiting for you to, to come in. So for video, you can just set that to on. Participants, you can set that to off. Just leave this. And then you can go down here and select your calendar. I personally have uh, Google. That's what we use. We use Gmail for everything. So we uh, we use we sync it with our Google Calendar, and I'll talk to you about that here in about 10 seconds. I do mute participants upon entry. And... Actually, you should probably just leave automatically record meeting. Just leave that on because that's um, uh, it's an easy backup for you just in case. So that's it. Now your Zoom meeting is saved. And if you noticed, it automatically popped open my email account. And it was logging us into our Google Calendar so we could see the meeting inside of our Google Calendar. From there you just go into participants and you invite say the bride, the groom. Uh, if you're working with a planner, invite them. And then if you're working, if you know, like the parents emails, that kind of stuff, invite them as well, because then they can forward the meeting invitation to any, you know, any relevant parties and that kind of stuff. And then they'll take care of sending it to, to who needs to be in it and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's pretty simple at that point. It's the same thing, same concept with the YouTube videos where you're sharing the link. People are just sharing the meeting invitation and that'll give them a meeting ID and that kind of stuff. So that's all good. Let's say that it is time for the ceremony. So you're, you're ready to go. Like I said, my camera right now is simply connected through the HDMI out of the monitor. It's going to the Elgato cam link. And because we have a 2019 MacBook Pro, the uh, there's no USB ports on it. You know, thanks, Apple. So uh, we have it connected through a USB-C, a little hub that we just keep inside of our equipment. Uh, because I did do that once. I did get to a wedding that I was live streaming, and the only thing that I did not have was the USB-C to USB converter. I'd, so I'd, I'd left it, like we were four hours away from home, and I'd left it at the house. So we bought an extra one. We just keep it in our equipment, like in one of our Pelican cases, so we don't need anything. We can just grab one Pelican case and walk out. All right, so... Let's look at starting the meeting. Now, if you notice, you see me on the screen. So it was very easy. I didn't do anything. I just clicked start. Down here on the bottom left, you can select your FaceTime HD camera or your CamLink 4K. Now, you that that's it. You don't need OBS. You don't need anything crazy. Like, that's it. Um, same thing with the microphone. 
Right now it's recording through the MacBook Pro speakers because I'm recording the screenshot, but I can change it to the cam link. And if I changed it to the cam link, it would be picking up whatever microphone is set into the camera itself. Now we personally use the Rode Wireless Go 2. Uh, we love that thing. And spam phone calls, man, I tell you, they get you every time. Uh, we use the Rode Wireless Go 2. We love that thing. Uh, you can have one of them set on the efficient, another set on say a separate microphone where people are given, you know, readings and that kind of stuff so that you can record two different sources of audio, have it split through the left and right channel and have it coming right, right into the camera, which would then be feeding out through the speakers of whoever's watching it because you can set it right here under the microphone. So we, we love those things. Uh, that's probably one of the best investments that we've made in a little while was picking that up. Now, with that being said, that's pretty much it. Now, since there's nobody else in the room, you can't really see much because it's just me. However, when there are multiple people, you want to pin. So if there were multiple people on here, you could right click on the thumbnail and then you could pin that thumbnail. When you pin the thumbnail, that will make it to where this is the only image that's seen no matter what's going on at the bottom. If there's people talking and that kind of stuff, you can, you can pin it and go through, you can mute all the participants, um, and then just leave that one image up just kind of how you see it. Now, one thing that I do want to remind people of is if you look at what you see right now, you see the red record box, you see my, my recording frame rates, which I just realized I left in 4k 60, uh, we just came, we had some weddings over the weekend. I forgot to change that. Uh, then, you know, your ISO, like all that kind of stuff. So you can go into your camera. You can go into the menu. You can go to HDMI record out. It's, that, it's the same on all Panasonic devices. I'm sure that it, it's the same on everything for the most part. And then just turn off the info. And then this will be a clean screen in front of you. You wouldn't have to worry about seeing any of this. It would just be a simple image of me. I love how you can see the focus peaking in my beard. That's actually pretty cool. So yeah, no, it's, it's really simple to stream through zoom. This is pretty much it. You can, what, what I really like about doing this is if we somehow left. So say we lost our connection and we left, you can just rejoin the meeting with YouTube. There's been some issues to where if the person that's streaming leaves, that kind of severs that connection and then you, you can't really get it back. So there's, there's some, you know, I, I never had that happen and I, you know, hopefully don't, but at least with zoom, you know, that you can get right back into it. You just Go back to Zoom, go back into your meeting, and you can open it back up. So this is uh this is pretty much it. Like there's I, I'm a fan of doing it through Zoom. I think there's a couple of fail safes. You know, this is automatically recording. You can see it right here. It automatically connected to my cam link. Uh, because I think it's the the last one that I used. But you can see how easy it is to just switch between the two. So it's not, you're not trying to, you know, authenticate and connect things. Like you're just, you're just doing something pretty basic through Zoom. And you can see the quality, like it looks, looks really good. I'm going, you know, oh, you can also see I'm shooting in vlog right now. But if you notice, there is a LUT applied to it. So make sure that if you do shoot in vlog or if you shoot in any type of log profile like we do, you can go to um, your... HDMI out, which would have an equivalent of a monitor display, and then you can turn the LUT on there. So we have, we obviously have the LUT on. That's why it looks just like it does right now. And it doesn't look flat uh, like a traditional vlog would. So that's a little tidbit for you. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty much it. It's pretty basic. I enjoy doing it. I think it's quick, it's easy to set up. And then once it's going, you can just leave it cruising along. So. We personally like it. So if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, we'll probably keep the audio for this and then post it on our podcast. So for those of you who don't listen to the podcast, we'll, we'll put it on there too. Um, 
and make sure you join our private Facebook group, Wedding Videography for Beginners. I hope everybody is staying safe and we will see you with the next video. All right, bye.